now you're live. Okay, now I'm live. I think we are live. I think we are live. So what happened? Hello, Nicole. Hi. <laughs> That's so funny. I I was talking to Nicole for five minutes and I was interviewing her and then we realized my husband told me that we were no live. It's very strange. So some spirits are here with us tonight. So there we go. We're starting again. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexandra, and I'm uh, I'm a founder of Olenko's Kitchen. And today I have a special guest, amazing Nicole Frolic, who is an intergalactic coach. Uh, she wrote a book, Inflexible Me. She um, coaches people. She does card readings she has an amazing youtube channel and a podcast so and i was part of the incredible cruise that uh she organized in january we went to mexico and it was yeah uh, it, it, that was yeah very very that interesting yeah during the full moon and the clips yes so um uh, yeah, and last year I did coaching with Nicole and uh, she helped me so much going through difficult times in my life. And yes, and I was very uh, reluctant to hiring a coach because I wasn't trusting. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a coach and you need to open yourself up. And yeah, it was hard because that came from my childhood and my beliefs and not trusting so i'm just so glad that i hired you and yeah and you helped me so much can, can we talk a little bit about uh why is beneficial for coaches hire hire another coach or, or a facilitator yeah. it i mean it's so important you always want to have someone you're mm -hmm. looking towards who can be some sort of mentor for you uh it helps facilitate your growth and it helps challenge you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need help in discovering certain things. Um, sometimes our egos can get in the way, fears can get in the way. And I think it's really important. I have someone that I work with as well. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's important. You want to have a support system for your own growth and evolution. And mm -hmm. although you find out a lot of information through your own searching and deep diving into your shadow self it is kind of nice to have someone there that is like it a bit of an accountability and may be able to shed light on things that you're not able to see on your own yes that that that's the word that is very important accountability because you have a session and then we're like okay next week and sometimes i was like oh maybe in two weeks because that's how i operate <laughs> yes and you're like no no let's get through a session because i think that's part of your personality you very uh like organize and yeah and i'm lacking certain mass which we're going to be talking about the yeah the masculine. Uh, intergalactic coaching through the divine masculine and feminine so that was you know very good like to show me this things that i need to work through it and uh okay a lot of triggers came a lot, a lot of shadow limiting beliefs and family stuff from childhood so yeah you really helped me a lot and do, so you work so if somebody wants to coach with you you i mean you live far away from me so yeah no problem they can do it for zoom skype right yeah all of my work is online yeah. so i do coaching um one-on-one -on -one, online via video and i do i use different things it's all intuitive uh no person i coach the same i take everything in with that person and tailor it to what they need because everyone's different so I don't use like a script or a sort of like exercises that I would typically open someone up with. Everything's intuitive. I sometimes use my Oracle cards or tarot cards as intuitive tools. And I just recently um, started channeling um, a little bit more and um, we can talk about that later, but yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got some new star family um, sending me messages, which is great. Awesome. And I see some girls from the crew. Susan is here and Marina. Hello. And they all sending love. Hi, girls. Yes. Hi, girls. We love you, too. And uh, yes, yeah, so everything is a holographic universe, as I've learned from you and from Marina. That's what she talking about, different timelines. So when we did the coaching, there is no one else there. It's just me. Yes. And I need yeah. to. Yeah. It's which is kind of like hard hard to comprehend and the people the situations all the stuff the let's call it crap many times you know like the stuff that 
we don't want to deal with it. It's happening for us, not to us, right? Exactly. Exactly. There's so many lessons mm-hmm. that we learn. In fact, our greatest gifts are usually mm-hmm. deep, deep, deep in the dirt. And so you yeah. find your gems when you go digging and you go searching. It's like digging for buried treasure, basically. Exactly. Oh, we it were... just doesn't just doesn't feel good at yeah. the time. And we were digging and like, I don't, of course, it's like you don't, you know, you don't sometimes you don't, you don't want to like hire a coach. You don't. But like when everything fails and your life is basically like falling apart and you don't know what to do, then you yeah, hire a coach or hire uh, some kind of facilitator, acupuncturist. And, and it, sometimes there's a number of people that they will help you on emotional, physical, yes, a spiritual, intergalactic. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. with you, you do a lot of, which is great with you, that you, you are familiar with many different levels. So, so it's great. But yeah, I, I really recommend uh, Nicole. So that will be amazing. And uh, it is an inside job. So yes, you are my, like, you helping me, but you can't do it for me, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's all up to you. How bad do you want it? (laughs) And that's just basically how the universe works. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to put it out there for the universe to, to acknowledge that if you're not going to put forth the effort, you can't expect the universe to support you in return. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, shall we talk about your book first? Sure. So if, sure. if somebody's not familiar, what is the, or maybe they've heard the divine masculine and feminine, like, do we all have it? Like if there is a male, he's uh, masculine and a female is fe- feminine, like. Uh, the, the energies are not gender specific. They're, um, so we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. Uh, there are, you know, depending if you're male or female, you may express more of the masculine or more of the feminine. So, for instance, I'm a woman, <laughs> um, but I clear I was beautiful I one. Ex- <laughs> Thank you. I've been clearly expressing my masculine energy for the first 31 years of my life. I was predominantly in my masculine energy. I had suppressed my feminine energy, and so the last 10 years or so has been a journey on reconnecting to my feminine energy mm-hmm. and allowing that to grow and nurture it and foster it and allow it to really transform the person that I am. And it's just been a really beautiful journey. Great. So like some I have behind you, uh, we have some uh, like qualities. So masculine qualities will be logical, reason, logic, reason, action, firm, survival, loyal, adventurous, uh, strength. And for feminine will be intuition, nurturing, healing, gentle, expressive, wise, patient, emotional, flexible. And these yes. and there are many. No, these are just few. So and so it's no surprise that. Um, I, I was very inflexible, uh, which kind of sings to the fact of why I wasn't in my feminine energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and because being flexible, um, being able to bend and flow and all that kind of stuff is very feminine um, in its qualities. And I wasn't expressing that at all. And so because my mind was very rooted in just the masculine nature, my heart was shut down, my body was responding to that. And so my journey really kind of through my book is about reconnecting with my body and how my body became my greatest teacher. My body was actually something I really hated um, for most of my life, not in the way that most people would think that um, someone would hate it, but I just hated it because it wasn't able to bend. And really that was just a reflection of my inner world that I wasn't really, I was very stubborn. I was very, um, my way or the highway, uh, just mm-hmm. just didn't really want to see things in other ways. So very tunnel vision. And this whole journey of, well, it kind of started off with a meditation, a 10-day silent meditation, but that opened my mind to try yoga. And uh, that journey is what the book is about and how I learned certain fundamental principles that I apply now to my life and through my coaching that have forever changed um, how I approach everything in my life. So if somebody uh, is stubborn or not flexible, that means that they are they lacking of the feminine qualities, would you say? That, that's um, one indication, yes. Okay, and what if somebody <laughs> is very uh, firm and like, 
tough and and organized that means they lack and no i wanted to say if they lacking of this they don't have boundaries which i like you know it was hard for me to have the boundaries like pe- i would have let people take advantage of me or i always felt like you know we feel like victim mentality or something that means that we lacking of the uh of the masculine uh qualities. well you're you are but you're also in wounded feminine okay. so there's what i like to call wounded feminine mm-hmm. and wounded masculine which is where a lot of our pain um takes us into those qualities and then there's wild feminine and wild masculine which is how creator intended it mm-hmm. to be how it was it's naturally inherent in us but through trauma and wounds and and all that we revert into the wounded aspects so as a woman you want to be in the flow mm-hmm. or not even I shouldn't even say as a woman because I'm just kind of thinking about myself but if um you know as anyone who's more representative of their feminine mm-hmm. um nature you're in the flow and that's great because there's a certain level of allowance which is very important and letting all that happen but if you are more in the feminine you're not honoring your masculine you're not creating boundaries and so boundaries aren't limiting but they're very important for you to understand that there are certain things you need to be accepting of and certain things that are not allowed so for instance letting people walk all over you or letting people treat you a certain way mm-hmm. it's very important to have your boundaries because you there if you're not saying no you're always saying yes mm-hmm. and sometimes it's important to say no because saying no to someone is saying yes to you mm-hmm. and this is something i think a lot of people um forget uh when especially empathic people is because you feel so much and you want to help mm-hmm. others but there's a point where you have to sometimes say no in order to maintain your own boundaries and keep yourself protected which is a very masculine energy so it's learning the 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 really the the strong aspects of each the feminine and the masculine qualities so that you can harmonize those together because nature uses both in everything and so when you are out of balance from one and predominant in another you're not creating in the way that you are inherently um um birth to do. Mm-hmm. And so this my work with the divine masculine and feminine energies is a, is helping people see the strength in both qualities and how marrying them together cre- is allowing you to manifest um in a completely more powerful way for you and often times much quicker. And also um two things. So it has nothing to do that like if somebody is sexy or very you know like that is feminine like because it could be with the male yes right or somebody is tough with muscles so this has nothing to do with the appearance right it no, could but i mean i mean it could yeah, but, but it's but not it's not, no, it's not an inside and uh like my cat we adopted this cat she kind of adopted herself like last year so she had the kittens she was a feral cat she brought before she brought the kittens to our house she's the sweetest heart, uh, cat her name is sweetheart but let me tell you when there was a possum and another cat she just was like a lion i never see him like this like she was like wow like protecting the little you know her little newborn babies kittens and i'm yeah. like whoa i never seen that because she's usually so gentle and that's what i'm saying like sometimes certain qualities will come at certain time of your life right they may not uh, manifest every day but right no but see and that's see that is an example of the cat going into masculine mm-hmm. which is also kind of called mama bear mm-hmm. kind of mode exactly. but it is the masculine energy of um the female when they go into mama bear mm-hmm. mode um because it is protective your mm-hmm. masculine energy is what protects the beautiful nurturing mm-hmm. compassionate tender areas of the feminine aspect so the the masculine energy within you allows the birthing of these beautiful creative energies within you and gives you the space to do that without being influenced by negative um aspects and keeps you protected so if you don't have those boundaries in place that's when things start to seep in and and energies that you may not want around you whether they're coming in the form of people or circumstance or or anything like that so it's it's all related and it's mm-hmm. important to know both and important to know where you're kind of positioned on the scale of the energies and what you need to do to bring yourself back into union for yourself first because let's face it most people 
just want love on this planet. Mm -hmm. They want to, they want to love and they want to be loved. Mm -hmm. And in order to have that union of love, you have to create it within you first so that you can project it into your hologram. We know Marina talks about this mm -hmm. all the time. You know, you are the creator of your own hologram. If you want to project that union out into your world, you have to have that within you first. So I like working with these energies with people a lot so that they can see where it's lacking in their own life and what they need to do to bring it closer together. And, uh, I don't know if, if we said this or when we were not online that we thought so you also <laughs> because sometimes it's hard, hard to like coach yourself so you also you said that you have a coach that sometimes you work with to help I, you I, yeah. I have a mentor mm -hmm. I have oh. someone um I have a couple people mm -hmm. that I you know I I, I shouldn't I don't just have one mm -hmm. I actually have a couple of mm -hmm. people that I'll reach out for different areas mm -hmm. of my life um but there's things that I'm not able to see on my mm. own. And also I like to be challenged. Mm. I, you know, as you become um, more awakened and more aware of what's going on around you, you want to seek out people who are at a little bit of a mm. higher level than you in, in a way, because how else are you supposed to mm. grow? Uh, you need that kind of stimulus to, um, to kind of instigate or ignite the flame of transformation within you. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so when I was coaching with you and I remember you said something like, but look at it from the higher perspective, like look at it from and sometimes when you're in that, let's call it again, crap, like you are in the, you know, like somebody triggers you or you just have enough or things are not going well. It's hard to see it like through the pink glasses and be like, oh, sure. Yeah. Living from the heart. We are going to 5D right it's like things triggers us and we are we get angry or we get frustrated and what you told me it's okay like let these feelings like you know don't don't put them on the side and pretend don't, don't exist and that was like first time i think in my life i was like oh so it's okay to be angry or okay to be sad because many times we are not allowed as children or even at school or for life or in your job to like show these being vulnerable or even you know showing these emotions because they they're not right right and you tell me no it's okay but just then look at the from the higher perspective and that was like such a revelation for me when i did coaching yep. with you yeah it's so important to honor those feelings if you're angry do not push it down because that energy will then start trickling down through the energetic body levels so everything um starts at a spiritual level, then it transforms into the emotional body, moves into the mental body, and eventually, if you haven't taken care of it, it moves into the physical body. You cannot disregard your own feelings. You have them for a reason. Now, ideally, <laughs> you'd like to not react through the feelings. Exactly. You want to be aware of them and deal with them in a healthy nature. Um, but, you know, if you need to scream, go somewhere where no one can hear you and just scream. Um, it's important to honor that. And because feeling our emotions clears our energy field. It clears our energy field out and it just, it allows um, us to, it, it's like a detox in mm -hmm. a way. It is like a detox. Now, it's so important also to remember that looking at things only from a positive mm -hmm. um, place is not honoring mm -hmm. the full spectrum of um, duality. Remember that on this, the spectrum of duality, you can have positive and you can have negative. Um, the void is in between that. So you need to be able to also honor the, um, the negative aspect, which is just a level of perception um, that we have. And kind of be able to like be okay with it once you're okay with it everything shifts and this is i talk about this in my book resistance um uh, ev that which you resist will persist so moving into that state of allowance and acceptance of something like okay i don't like how this feels and i'm okay with that but why why is this happening like okay i don't like how this feels i'm okay with it i'm, I'm okay with it, the fact that i'm super angry and then all of a sudden you're giving yourself the space to move through it and then be open to seeing other perspectives of why, which is where we learn. And another thing that I really, and, and again, like hi, hiring a coach, it's a personal thing because like you really, you, you as a coach really work for me because I am very um, artsy and, 
you know, I have so many ideas and you kept like the boundaries because boundaries was something that I was working on. And like sometimes you gave me exercises and she, and I said, oh, but I remember like I, I just do it in my head. And you said, no, like you need to write it down. And I'm like, no, no, but I know. And you're like, no, but it's completely different when you write it down. It's even the the whole um like mechanics of writing something down, like even in this 3D and your hand and like, it's kind of like writing a contract and, and spending the time because that's another thing with me. Like I'm very like, oh, I don't have time. I always helping everybody. And like you sit down and you really focus and you, the time for me, like putting myself first. Mm -hmm. And that was something very, you know, very interesting. And you kept like the boundaries that's um, because I need that. <laughs> I need sometimes <laughs> like a little bit boot camp. But that's again for me, for some people, maybe you want like this very, uh, not that you are, you know, a strict coach. That's not what I mean. But like just, just from, you know, with me, it really like the energy was very good. So. Oh. oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. It's, you know, I, I honestly believe that, you know, whatever we put out there is naturally like attracts like. And so I know that whoever I'm supposed to work with will be um, brought my way. Uh, and even if it's only for a short period of time or a long period of time, it doesn't matter. Everything's important. And I, and I just feel really um, blessed to allow that just to be part of my uh my coaching journey which is me moving into my feminine <laughs> that that's great so i know you did a uh, great um activation meditation so can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so um uh back in january or actually i started this i released it in january but i worked on it just after christmas is um, an activation for union of the divine masculine and feminine energies. And this was such a beautiful um, creation. Uh, I just feel oh, it's actually one of my favorite things that I've done. It, probably because it's part of my healing journey. Um, it was very healing for me to create it. Um, it allowed me to come more into union within myself. And um, that activation, it's like a 40 minute meditation slash activation where I take you through a story of how the masculine and feminine separated into wounded and how they can bring you back and it's actually become quite popular a lot of people have been downloading it and I've been getting really awesome responses and feedback from people who've been working with it which is really cool uh, part of it is channeled and part of it is just me and I can't tell you where the channel part begins and the part of me is in there. It's, it flowed through me in like, it just kept typing and typing and it, I just, I love it. And so I actually experienced an activation of union while I created it. And so even when I listen to it, it's just, it's really, it's cool. So I love, that's actually one of my favorite creations and how just people get part of my healing. That's awesome. I think that's the best thing. Like when we heal, ourselves and then like we can you know share all uh, share the um the message i'm actually working on the program myself with the things that i my healing journey with people like a lot of people ask me how to lose weight not that i'm like trying to lose weight but like the emotional part you know and and with the food and everything so that's great so how people can uh like um, download this on your website? Or? Uh, they can go to my website inflexibleme.com okay. and just go to the store and it's it's available there. Okay, great. And uh, I mean, you I, you said your favorite thing. I mean, you do so many amazing things. I I don't even know like when do you find the time because you like you do so many videos. It's like uh, and and you know the coaching and 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 events and yeah, you're like a busy busy bee. Uh, but I think that's part of your you know your um qualities that you very uh you know very organized and very uh ac action oriented right i am very at home in my masculine energy yes, yes. make sure you relax <laughs> make sure you relax no and i i um actually uh, the last 10 years of this journey of learning to become more in my feminine energy uh, was very much me learning how to find the balance. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, it's very important to have a very flexible schedule. In fact, my flexible time is much more important to me than money mm -hmm. uh, because it, it stifles my creativity. It stifles my feelings of... Um, 
Uh, I don't like to be stuck to anything and it's not a matter of commitment. It's a matter of when something's really flowing in, I need to be able to go with it. And it's because I really want to honor that feminine aspect within me. Mm -hmm. And so I used to be very rigid and, and just fill up my schedule to, um, to no end. And now I make sure I don't do that, but I still do a lot. Um, I think I'm just so blessed that I've been able to find what makes me the happiest mm -hmm. and where my passion is and that it just stemmed, my work stems from that place. And so it doesn't always feel like work. It, it does sometimes, but only because it, it, if there's things that take a lot of time and everything's energy, but it's not anything that I'm not enjoying. I'm always enjoying it. And, but you know, sometimes we do have to take time out for yes, ourselves and just, I, I've been, I've gotten a lot better at doing oh, that. that. That's great. And especially, I know like after the cruise, I mean, you needed some rest because that was a huge, yeah, you know, that organizing was a huge such a event. big event. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually working on the second one now. Wow. Um, I'm working, yeah, I'm working on an event with, um, my podcast, uh, co-hosts. We're doing an Enlighten Up conference, and uh, it looks like it's going to be in Colorado. We're just nailing down the venue right now. We visited the site, and um, we're really excited to you get know that kind of when? for 2020. Oh, 2020? June, June 2020 okay. is what we're looking at right okay, now. Okay, I yeah. want to come. I know it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I hope you do. I've never been to Colorado, actually. It's beautiful. I know. I mean, and we're, yeah, it looks amazing. We're going to incorporate the Colorado lifestyle oh, wow. into do the conference that's... it'll be kind of a slash conference retreat wow that that sounds fantastic and uh so um i want to talk a little bit about like we you you mentioned a little bit um especially women i think many times i mean i don't like to make like generalize but we busy there are a lot of women are moms they take care of kids they care takers they're always taking care of someone you know helping and they don't have the time to maybe you know go for yoga class or or even you know cooking healthy food for the whole family and then they're just eating on the go or like eating fat you know like french fries because you know they they're always taking care of the kids and the laundry and the dogs and everybody else so uh and they don't maybe don't even have the money or something is Taking care of us very important. What comes first, taking care of others or, or us? No, 100% you, always you, always, always you. Do not buy into the sacrificial mother or father mm -hmm. <laughs> narrative that if you love someone so much, you would sacrifice anything mm -hmm. for them. That is a yeah, we told false that, narrative. Yes. Yeah, that is a false narrative that has been projected onto our, um, our consciousness. Uh, through many different forms, whether it's media, religion, uh, movies, all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's to keep you, um, it's to keep you suppressed and not giving back to yourself, which actually affects your potential of what you can give to others. So you think that if you're sacrificing yourself to give to, maybe it's your children, maybe it's a lot of people in your family, your friends, um, whatever it is, that this is some level of, um, gosh, sainthood. Uh, it, and we can buy into that, sure. But that's the ego. That's a, this is one of the trickiest tricks of the ego mm -hmm. is because if you were to actually take even half of the energy of what you're giving to others and put it into you, you double what you'd be able to give to others. So if you're really interested in giving back to others, you have to give back to yourself first. Remember, everything starts within you. You cannot project out into your reality what you don't have within you. So if you really want to project this idea of wholeness and potential, mm -hmm. you have to create that within you first. And then you, what people don't realize is that they are so, so much more capable of so much more than what they're allowing themselves to give. And it's only because they're not giving to themselves first. So I always say, take care of you first. You think about on an airplane, they tell you to put your mask on first before you put on your child. You need to be in your power in order to reach your potential. And so when you are able to reach your, reach your potential, what you are able to give back out is far beyond what you're able to do now. And it's hard for people to grasp that initially, but once you start doing it, it locks in and it sinks in and people get it. I uh, giving to myself first, cause I was, I used to be that way. I used to sacrifice over and over 
And as soon as I finally started taking care of me and building the right boundaries and knowing when to give and when to receive, this is another thing you need to know when to receive, okay? Because it's the, it's the laws of the universe. It's the laws of nature and energy. Energy needs to be received and gift. You need to allow it to flow in in order for it to flow out. If you're stifling it coming in, then you have a finite amount of energy of what you can give out. What if you actually tapped into the infinite energy flow and allowed it to continually flow through you, then you have infinite amount of love, infinite amount of potential to give. And this is something that um, I go through a lot with clients and, um, and in friends and family. Yes, and this is so crucial. And you are enough, right? Because especially I think for women, we are so objectified and, and even like the feminine, all oh, the feminine is the sexy, you know, like looking like the, from magazines with eyelashes and the nails and the hair, blah, blah, blah. And especially like now with the social media, Instagram, Facebook, everybody looks so like perfect, but this is not real. Like the real you, like if, if you have a pet, like the pet will love you no matter what in your pajamas with smelly breath in the morning. Yes, it's like the dog or the cat, they will kiss you no matter like you are enough. No, like love yourself, self, self love and self care always comes first. And you told me that. So thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm, you're very welcome. It was taught to me, so I love to pass mm -hmm. it on. I used to believe I was completely insufficient. Mm -hmm. So I like to use I am a, I am sufficient. There's mm -hmm. a vibration with enough mm -hmm. that I don't resonate with. It feels a little bit mm -hmm. stifled. So I use I am sufficient. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this is actually one of the most incredible phrases you can say to a newborn, an infant and baby when they're growing up is to keep telling them over and over, you are sufficient. We have such a lack of consciousness in the society that we're trying to overcome. And working with the youth and the young, like especially when they're infant stages, to constantly tell them, you are sufficient. That vibration going in, they hear that, it helps them to build this, this value system of sufficiency within them. And so I love to use the phrase, I am sufficient mm -hmm. um, with myself. And uh, I think it's important for anyone who's out there who's got um, little ones uh, to let te keep letting them know because all of this stuff stems from our young childhood oh, yeah, or definitely. our very, very early formative years. So if you can get that in at a really early age, you can really stop that lack consciousness from taking on. Yeah, it's all, it's all about that we don't feel there's not enough, that this programming so we can deactivate deprogram re change the frequencies change our dna change our future right we are the the masters of our universe right and we absolutely we can really do anything we want yes and with help and that's why hiring a coach or different um different modality person it could be even a and medical practitioner, I mean, for everybody will be different, you know, different personas, but whatever their, their situation is. So now I want to change a little bit the, the subject. We uh, so before you were doing all this stuff and were you this is not you didn't go to school for this. Like, what was your background? How did you <laughs> get where you got to this intergalactic stuff and the cards and the and, you know, the flexible book altar coach? The ex experience, life, it's, uh, I believe that experience is our greatest teacher. Um, and we live in a world that tells us we need to seek out our approval through institutions and their diplomas and their certificates mm -hmm. and all of that in order for us to be, um, in order for us to be honored of, or, or even able to charge money that's a very big one in order to charge money for your services. Isn't that so interesting? That's part of the matrix. And um, I got stuck in that when, when I was in my early 20s because I knew I wanted to, do, to be a coach. I knew I wanted to do that, but I didn't have any training. And it actually stifled and suppressed that within me um, from pursuing it because I was going through very big insufficiency phase at mm -hmm. that time. I didn't believe I was sufficient and I didn't believe that I had anything worth someone else paying for in the form of like those kind of services because I didn't have a certificate or diploma to say, yeah, I, I, I'm good enough for you to pay me. And so 
for me, a lot of my journey of moving into this, the spirituality started when I was 17. And then I had a mentor who was a naturopath who happened to do like very uh, unconventional treatments such as dolphin brain repatterning, um, past life regression, uh, things like that. And so she opened me up to all of that. And that's how I really started to learn. She opened me up to the Pleiadians. Um, she told me I need to start reading on the Pleiadians, which is because I'm a Pleiadian, um, predominantly Pleiadian. It's a very strong form of my um, DNA um, for this lifetime. And so that really was seeded in me at a very young age, early 20s. And so now I've taken that information and through the experience, my own experiences, which you really will not find a greater teacher than experienced matched in with your own internal knowing. Uh, that is where the ultimate teachings lie. You have all the answers that you need. They are within you. It's just a matter of trusting and going within and finding that. So to be quite honest, I just started following both my passions and my fears because Speaking is one of my biggest fears. I didn't believe I had speaker. a. I did not believe that I had anything worth listening. Wow. Like I believe that I didn't have to say anything that was worth listening to. Uh, that stemmed from, um, you know, my childhood with my dad, who I love very much. He's an amazing man, but he liked to intimidate me with a very loud voice, and I just would shut down and I would go really quiet. And I just believed that whatever I had to say wasn't important enough. And that stemmed throughout. And it was it was good, though. This was all like, I, I you know, I love that that was part of my childhood because it was something for me to overcome and really pushed me into a place where I really knew that if I wanted what I wanted, I was going to have to face my fears. And a lot of my greatest gifts that I love to share come from my fears. They're on the other side of my fears. And so... Uh, it was through me facing those fears as well as the things that I was super passionate about and finding a way to marry them. Now, isn't that the masculine and the feminine? I was just going to say is you kind really of the dark and the masculine is kind of the light, right? You think yeah. of the moon, you think of the sun and how do you find the feminine represents the negative charge? The masculine represents the positive charge. How do you find and marry those two together? And that's kind of what I've done. And I've taken that all on and I just realized that, you know, when I started to build my own self-worth and I started to build my own value system, not based on anything outside of me, but always based on what's inside of me, no one can ever take that away from me. And I knew that I was worthy. I knew I was sufficient. And I knew I had information that could help others because it helped me. So there's got to be at least one person out there that I can help, right? And so we it doesn't mean that when you go to help others that you might be this person who reaches millions and, and, and hundreds of millions of people. It doesn't matter. It's it's all the same anyway, and so it, it, we get caught up in the numbers and all that. And that's ego. But as long as you're willing to put yourself out there and help others and know that, you know, there's someone out there that you might just help. That can make all the difference. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And I was just gonna say that that's what I love about your work and and your coaching and your videos because many people will say like, oh, just follow your passion, just follow your bliss, you're gonna be beautiful, blah, blah, blah. But you say, yes, follow your passion for your bliss, but follow your fears because the fears, but again, the ma masculine and feminine is gonna show you actually like, and then you're gonna bring it to the surface and then you're gonna have to work through things and then it's all gonna be balanced and complete and beautiful and you're gonna feel like, you can then shine your light to the world yes so yeah, yeah I, I love that and you walk your talk so that's you know i mean there is no better exam you know like people can say different things but you know it just resonates the energy just you know be before we've met in person i'm like you know this is this is somebody very special so i see great things for you but uh oh, like you, you know I, I sometimes have those visions anyway but um uh, another question so um if you were going to give like maybe like few tips uh, like for somebody you know they may be struggling and they don't know what to do like uh where would be a good place to start uh, do you mean struggling just in general struggling on like a spiritual journey like what do you mean like in some i feel like sometimes when people come to me like even with food like they think it's food but it really has nothing to do with, like with losing weight it has nothing to do with food many times it's emotional spiritual so uh yeah like if somebody say like i just don't feel like my life is everything suck like my life suck they don't even know 
I feel like lately a lot of people are waking up and they really even like the mainstream they they really reaching don't you feel like you have a lot of people reaching out to you for your oh, videos yeah. so like three tips for these people like the what where would be a good place to you know to start um okay so one of the things that's really easy to do and this is kind of um an exercise so i'm kind of this is kind of more of a linear um 3d kind of exercise mm -hmm. uh is you, just on a piece of paper on one side have your fears and on another side have your passions what you love to do your joy and start connecting with that and start making a list of what those are and start realizing what really wants to rise to the top and what wants to start kind of being pushed down a little bit. Now you have to be really honest. This can be a very difficult test because believe it or not, a lot of people know what their fears are. They don't know what their joys are. And that's really, um, gosh, that's, that's so unfortunate. You know, we live in this world that when people, I go, well, what makes you happy? I, I don't know. And so start off with the small things. You don't have to make it some grand, huge thing. It could be something simple as I love walking in nature or I love to dance or I love my morning coffee, you, whatever it is, just start writing things down to get the flow going. Um, and once you start flowing, then don't stop. Just keep writing, 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 writing. And then you can go in there and you can start seeing what resonates more, what hits you in the heart okay with um what you love and what hits you more in the lower gut which is your root chakra in the sense of fear where it kind of triggers you into like flight flight or fight or fight or flight mode this will be a really good indicator okay of where you can kind of see where you need to um start in a sense of what are you most scared of and what are you really happy with and you can start to find out how to marry those uh, it's also really important to to go within and pay attention to the little mind at the back. And I often the, the the one of the things that really helped me become hyper aware, which is actually going into my second book, um, is in 2014 I started doing these gratitude meditations. Um, in the evening. I wanted to, I do it in the evening and I would do it in the morning and I would just basically blurt out a stream of everything I was grateful for. And I would go down to even the small things. I was grateful for a full tank of gas in my car. I was grateful for a roof over my head. I was grateful for friends that love me. I was grateful for my two parents being alive and still loving me. Uh, I would just go and I would, and I would do this gratitude. And, something interesting started to happen that as I started to go through this gratitude list or stream, like I would just sit there and, and continue, I paid attention to the little voice in my mind that you don't always hear until you start to pay attention. And I started to realize that I didn't actually think I was worth any of it. I wasn't worth having really great friends. I wasn't worth, you know, having, all like the client base that I had, like there were, it's, you start to pay attention to that little voice that starts to tell you everything opposite of what you were saying you were grateful for. And so when I became aware of that voice, I started to realize, wow, I don't really like myself. And, um, I don't really think I have much to offer and I'm not that worthy. And so I started to pay attention to those things and I started to take actions of how I could create that worthiness. And so for instance, with like a really simple thing is the, my gas in my car. It's so simple, but I used to let my gas car, like the gas tank go down to almost empty, like red line it. I was almost chugging to the actual gas station to fill up my car. It was just a really bad habit that I got into, but I started to realize Oh, wow. I always let myself go down to empty because I'm not worthy of always having at the very least a half tank. I, I always let myself get down to the bare minimum. And so I started to shift that and I promised myself that I would never let my gas tank get below half. And this started to shift things for me because when you start to actually act them out, I started to tell myself you're worthy 
and you're worthy because I'm actually doing this for you. I'm gonna make sure your gas tank is never going below half point. It's a very simple and basic um, example, but these are the things that are so important. So if I knew that I loved meditation, but I just wasn't taking the time to do it, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, wow, it's because I don't think I'm worth the time to actually do something that I love. So I would make sure that I made it a priority to meditate every day, even if it was just for 10 minutes, because I knew that every time I didn't, I was saying to myself, you're not worth it. And so these are some fairly basic, easy things that most people can grab, get, get their head around and start doing to um, shift the energy within them and start to see them in a place of higher priority, higher worth, and also start discovering what it is that they really want to do here right now. Uh, also, uh, the great, great tips. I love it. Uh, I know that you love to exercise that. Yes. Would you say uh, it's very important? Uh, yeah. And I know that you were yeah. foodie too, and you pay attention what you eat. Would you add that to, to the, Oh the yeah. Too? Yeah. I mean, for me, movement is so important. Mm -hmm. I, my body is my vessel here. Mm -hmm. Without it, I can't do all the things that I love to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I work out at least four times a week. Um, I then I, and on top of like a weight workout, I'll, I now that the weather's getting nicer, I'll run probably one or two times a week. You're in well. amazing shape, yeah. And I do yoga, but I do more of a stretching yoga to give back to my body mm -hmm. because I learned that I'm pushing it too much. So I always make sure that I do things that then give back to me. Food is so important too, because that affects your vibration and you want to make sure that you're putting in healthy food into your body because you're just saying, I want to take care of you. You're my, my, you as my vessel is very important. Now, a lot of us don't even realize this, but our body has many messages for us, many teachings that, you know, tries to communicate with us. So when you start to connect more to your body, you're going to allow yourself to receive the communication that the body wants you to know. Um, having the mind body connection is so important and we often disconnect from it and don't take into account some of the really wise information that comes through our body. Great. And what if somebody, um, gets some kind of trigger, so maybe has food addictions or I don't know, it could be like a family situation, a work situation that they feel like kind of trapped. How would they neutralize it? Like they did the list, you know, they have, uh, and what do you think the next step will be like hiring a professional or somebody? Or It can, it, it depends on obviously um, where you're at. Like how mm -hmm. much do you want to, how much do you want this to shift for yourself? Mm -hmm. How much do you want it? And how much do you want Want the universe to know that you want it so that it can support you uh, is part of it. Um, I would say though for people that if you, um, this is where your boundaries come into play. This is where your masculine energy becomes very important um, because you need to create boundaries in order for you to discover this part of yourself. You cannot discover yourself when you're too busy taking care of everyone else around you or allowing that to seep in and distract you. So, um, masculine is very focused energy it's clear knowing and so when you're trying to discover yourself and going deep within the shadows which is your feminine energy you still have to maintain the boundaries of knowing what can come in and what can't right now for your highest good so one of the things that actually we just learned at Jessica Ulstrom's um, QRT mm -hmm. is take a 90 day timeout um, now I took a one year timeout and I went on a one year sabbatical um, I also moved to an island away from my entire family and friends and immersed myself in a completely new experience. That's a very extreme example. But can you do a 90-day timeout? For instance, my girlfriend just decided to do a 90-day timeout where she told her mom, she was, you just need to take care of you right now because I can't take care of you and I just need you to honor my space. It's not because I don't love you. I love you so much. But I need to, I need to do this for me. And it's about you making the concerted effort and decisiveness choosing you so that you can now make yourself a priority again when you reach new levels you then have those higher levels to give to others but you can't reach there when someone's constantly pulling you away distracting you all of this stuff and we tend to not realize how much is out there distracting us and pulling us away from the very thing that we need to discover within ourselves. i love it and many times like really look and like 
when what you say oh one day when i have time i will i don't know uh, go to china one day when i have time i will you know take a vacation and go to italy yes do we say this one day when i have free time i'm gonna go for like the whole day of spa it could be a little thing it doesn't have to be like a trip of your lifetime one day oh i really need the haircut oh i need to start juicing but i don't have time it could be the little things or the big things yeah. and we keep saying and saying and saying and like today is the day and i'm doing it i'm going on vacation next week and i was like oh should i go i'm not go it's not good the timing I'm, I'm going because i deserve it i haven't had vacation for a long time like a real vacation so good for you yeah so <laughs> i want to do the 90 days but maybe maybe uh but yeah it's here's like here's the thing every time this is for everyone listening every time you say i don't have time mm -hmm. what you're really saying is i'm not worth it exactly and when you can wrap your head around that and you bring that into your awareness, you will be amazed at where you are able to find time because it's, it's really just a trick that the ego plays on us to keep us so busy that we don't pay attention to the things we need to pay attention to. So just remember, every time you say, I don't have time, you're saying I'm not worth it. Exactly. And, uh, the time is yeah the time is tricky Do, uh, and asking the universe so you said like you you look at the things do you think it's beneficial to ask the universe like universe i so i i want to go on vacation show me like the signs that i'm that when i when i can go on vacation or something you think it's good to ask or like tell the universe that that's what you want or, or be more open and like um without any like objectives I think it's important to declare mm -hmm. what you wish for to wish. the universe. You declare your wishes out, like say them mm -hmm. out loud, write them down. You don't just have them in your mind. Mm -hmm. You need to bring them into this reality. You told and me that. <laughs> and speaking are very powerful. Um, also, uh, when you know that you want to do something or you wish for something, mm -hmm. what actions can you start taking to support that? So for instance, if you wish to go to Italy, start researching it. Mm -hmm. Start looking at different websites of all the different possibilities that you could, mm -hmm. you know, look at to make that happen. Uh, there are so many different ways that you can, and, and once you're doing that, you're open up the flow, your focus is going there, your attention is going into it. You, that's how you become a powerful creator is you, you want to put the intention and um, attention in the same direction. Great. Uh, somebody said, I am the opposite, but my fears still hold me back. So what if somebody's fears hold them back? I said, hire a coach and like get a, yeah, you may have to deep, deep deeper. Here's, because sometimes it's hard to do it by yourself. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, there's all, you know, you work with someone. I work with someone. Mm -hmm. I work with many different people. Um, I'm blessed enough that I've surrounded myself with so many like-minded people that um, in a way can help elevate me mm -hmm. okay from where I am so that I'm constantly learning but here's to that person's um, question this is a little game I play with myself when I am choosing from fear uh, when I have an important decision to make or a choice or it could even be a small thing how I shifted my reality was I started asking myself is this choice reflecting my fears or my greatest hopes and desires? What you choose from is what you create. And I wanted to stop creating a reality that was representing my fears. I wanted my reality to represent my hopes and desires. So every time I was about to make a choice or a decision, I would ask myself, is this reflecting my fears or is this reflecting my hopes and desires? And that's how I started to shift my reality. And it can be very daunting at times, but start off small. Don't overwhelm yourself with the really big things because eventually you start creating habitual patterns and your consciousness starts to shift. And you start to naturally start choosing more from hopes and desires and less from fear. Great. And um, a little bit about um, intergalactic stuff. So the hardest, the strongest electromagnetic um, device 
in the, in the universe, right? And it sounds kind of like, oh yes, we one person can really change, uh, affect a lot of energy, right? So if we, um, yeah, like how does it work with the with like intergalactic families? And you saying you're from Palladians, I Palladians. I just find out I'm Cassiopeian. So we're living on this earth, you know, in the 3D, still in the 3D, and. As you said, we have to put gas in our car. We have to eat the food. We have to, many of us. We still go to jobs and you know cook the dinner, do the laundry and everything. So living from the heart, like how the balance, like how to neutralize, you know, the five D, three D, four D. What's your <laughs> <laughs> well? Question. I think it's important. I think it's important to remember that you're down here for a reason, which means you're meant to exist here in 3D. So don't um, deny its existence and try to leave. Uh, you're down here for a reason. It's about how do you bring the 5D um, elements into the 3D to help transform it. It doesn't mean you leave, so to speak. Um, it means that you use yourself as a conduit to transmute and transform the energy here. And the greatest way that you can do that is through being the model. Now, for me, um, I had to, part of my journey of healing the divine feminine within me is opening up my heart. And I've been working a lot through the journey of my own heart and becoming a lot more vulnerable and a lot more raw and taking through that. And I recently uh, stepped into doing something that I was very fearful of that I was uh, very, uh, I, it took a lot of courage for me to do this, but because I did and I went into such a wrong vulnerable, vulnerable place of my heart, I received a major heart activation that has now connected me with, to my Palladian star family. And I'm starting to channel um, information from them, uh, which uh, I know will continue to get stronger, uh, because this is actually something relatively new within like the last month, but it's, you know, for this, for example, with the Palladians, which we've just, I've just kind of like really started to connect the dots is they're all about love. Like that's, that's their energy signature. Um, and naturally the only way I could, I've wanted to connect back home with them for so long. Like I've really wanted that connection for years and years and years. And they've recently told me that, in, that it was not going to be possible until I had this heart activation and where I went deep into the wrong vulnerable places that I've never allowed myself to go and to do it in a very uncertain circumstance of not knowing how it was going to be received. And so this allowed me, of course, to connect to my star family. I needed to have that frequency of love completely emitting from me from like the deepest places that I was never allowing myself to go. So connecting with your star families, there may be certain ways that, you know, for you specifically, that'll help you connect back to them and be able to receive um, information uh, that you may be wanting to bring here, or maybe it's just to serve you to your highest good. It's uh, very interesting. It's also interesting. Yeah, I think it's like all these pieces of puzzle, right? Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah a lot of like letting go and allowing and letting go of judgment and right and like not even relearning but just like remembering right like i'm like oh wow now yeah. it makes sense like i have a lot of stuff that comes to me from like childhood all this feelings that i had or, or emotions or thoughts and now i'm like this really makes sense like i wasn't crazy then it really like yeah so it's fascinating that the galactic stuff i love it so much so um if uh if anybody would like to do coaching with you they uh what do you offer i mean i have a few more questions for you but like so what do you offer because you do the card readings i don't know did you want it to like do some kind of card i didn't know if you wanted like a pick a card or something do you... i don't know do you want me to i don't know i know you always like have a card would you, you <laughs> think is do you have like a message or something you think it will be good to pick a card for uh here, let me just go grab sure, it one second. Sure. If you if you haven't um, seen um, Nicole's uh, video, she has so many videos on YouTube. I mean, amazing on very many different topics from 
like nutrition and food to the galactic stuff, the angels, okay. the ever, um, all different telomeres and yes, like all this different stuff that you, I'm talking about the variety of topics on your videos. I love it. Okay, let's see if there's a message here for <clears throat> everyone here today. What message would you like to leave everyone with? What is important for bringing into their awareness? Serve them to their highest light and their highest good only. Here we go. Oh, so we have um, the card Delight. Oh. And... Um, the frequency of delight supports our capacity to create and experience feelings of intense joy and happiness. The more delight we feel, the more delight we evoke in others. Okay, so this card is such a great one because um, the more you go into your frequency of ecstasy, your frequency uh, that the frequency of ecstasy is actually the what powers union. This is a really cool card to come in come in for us today. Uh, it powers the actual union. So when you can move into this place of ecstasy, which is um, is in that space, the void of the polarities, you are tapping into an energy frequency that is very palpable to all those around you. Now, this is important to understand in a sense of how you are the model is one of the best ways that you can become a teacher in this on this earth and by being a teacher it doesn't mean that you're specifically trying to be a teacher it could mean that just how you represent yourself and how you are to the people around you who will observe you maybe it's your children maybe it's your parents maybe it's your friends maybe it's co-workers uh, whoever it is people are always observing and for you to move into a frequency of delight and pure joy to be able to live a life from that place uh, is very contagious and people start to observe it and that will shift their energy within them like what's he or she doing that's got them so happy like that's a really cool energy to be in and the more you can live from that place the more you start to shift the reality for others not because of anything you're saying but because of what you're doing and how you're being and so this is kind of like what I feel like the message is for this delight card is go out there and start living from that place of ecstasy and delight and joy and even in this small ways because you never know who's watching you and you never know how you may transform someone's day maybe someone could be in a really low place and just by being around you in your own frequency the the energy of of this this delight and ecstasy and joy frequency is very big and powerful it's very hard to miss and when people start to walk into it, it's like, boom, they get hit with it. And so it's, to me, the most transformative way that you can um, um, help this world is by being the model in really positive ways. Very delightful. I love it. <laughs> and I'm telling you, watching your videos, your videos always uplift me. Like I'm on the kitchen, I'm driving, you know, like I'm listening to your videos. So yeah, you... You're the shining light of the of the delight. Yeah, I love the card. Great, that's such a beautiful card. And yeah, you balance the masculine qualities and feminine list that will bring you to that like delight, and you'll be yeah, you'll yeah. be like the the shining light. So great. Um, if Nicole is not coaching, doing podcasts you know preparing for new events meditating what do you do for fun like for fun like for you like you know that maybe nobody even knows that you like to do you know like i don't know dancing with ladies in your pajamas or something just something like just silly i for you. love 80s music 80s <laughs> i love it too i love 80s. so i'll like to kind of singing out loud to 80s music or um, just like a little mini dance party in my house <laughs> oh, okay. uh, sometimes because I love it. Um, you know, I love just being around. I just really, I love being around people uh, a lot. I'm a very like social mm -hmm. person as well as I really have, a t I, it's interesting. I'm very social and I love to be around people, but I also need my me time. And so I don't let people screw around with my me time. But, um, you know, like, I, I don't know. I love really nice wines. Like, I love a good glass of red wine. I love cheese. I love all that stuff. So I might be, like, indulging in that every now and then. Um, 
because I do live a pretty healthy lifestyle. So I allow myself those indulgences when I want to without guilt. Um, just because I know I'm down here and I want to experience the human pleasures. I just don't want them to um, go overboard. Um, but what else? Like, I don't know. Like, I like to be outside. I, when I'm in Colorado, especially, uh, I love being in the mountains. I love being more closer to nature. Must be but yeah, the 80s music is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love nature and I love 80s. And so uh, those are the two questions I always ask everybody that I interview. And the second one is, if you could spend the day with like anyone from past, future, it could be a book character, a fictional character from a movie, from past, future, other realities, who would that be and what would you do with them? Like you have the whole day, you can go anywhere, galactic, anywhere. Oh my gosh. So the first thing, oh, my head is tingling right now. So the first thing that came to my mind, so I'm going to say it, was Frodo. Frodo <laughs> from Lord of the Rings? Yeah, from the Lord of the Rings. Wow. It was my favorite book as a kid. And what would you and, do? And um, he just was on the most grand adventure of self. He really was. It's just the deepest, going into the depths of darkness you know, mm -hmm. and not being tempted by this ring and, and what the powers of it were. And, and just, I don't know. I, I think I'd want to hang out with Frodo. Wow, wow. <laughs> who doesn't? I mean, yeah, that's awesome. I will love that too. And yeah, yeah, you will like, what? You will go to like the adventure of the Lord of the Rings book. So you will go like, I don't know, skateboarding or going skiing in Colorado with him. Yeah, I'm, Anything? you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. I actually love just talking. Okay. I love listening to stories. Uh, so I probably just be there just to listen and observe and take in whatever knowledge Frodo would have to impart on me. <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, I know you were kind of, yeah, it was an hour and I know you had like, oh, an hour time because you're very busy and <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's Sunday. So you a little bit, you know, you may have some plans, but uh, anything else that you would like to add at the end? This was such a, a great interview. Uh, what would you like to add or how people can find you or any special like events or you're doing? Yeah, um, if anyone needs to find out more information about me, they can go to my website inflexibleme.com. If they want to work with me, coaching, all of that, there's um, things there, or you can email me info at inflexibleme.com. I also have a podcast called Enlighten Up mm -hmm. that is super fun and it comes out every Thursday. Uh, it's basically available everywhere um, on all apps for listening to podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, um, all that kind of stuff. And um, what else? Your videos. Uh, my videos, my YouTube channel, it's just my name, Nicole Frolic. Um, and uh, I do readings there, um, general readings. So if you resonate with them and you'd like your own personal reading, you can do that through my website as well. Um, I'm working on a couple of things. I am working on um, my second book and I am working on an Oracle deck. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, and then also this conference that I've got um, hopefully coming up in June of 2020 next year. Uh, all those details will be released through my newsletter on my website or through the website and through the podcast because the podcast is the host of this conference. So it'll be a lot of fun. That, that's awesome. And I'll be interviewing your co-host from the podcast, Lisa, sh soon. So Yeah, she's be so beautiful. Yeah, we're going to be talking <laughs> about the light language yeah, and, and it's, I, yeah, it's going to be very interesting because I don't know that much about it. But yeah, it sounds wonderful. So do you want to add like uh, the last uh, message like about balancing the masculine and feminine qualities of uh, like a last word for the viewers? There's a message kind of coming in actually right now. You are much more expansive than you'll ever know. Don't ever hide the greatness of your light. Don't let the shadows overcome you. You have everything that you need here on this planet and anything that you still need will be given to you in the right time. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's from our own, from, Pleiades? from our Pleiadians. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Love it. Uh, so, there you go, everyone. This is Nicole Frolic. I can like talk to this girl uh, 
you know, for a long time. Yeah, we had so much fun on the cruise. I hope I see you soon in person and we can dance to the 80s music. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so have a wonderful evening. And yes, please uh, stay tuned. I'll be interviewing lots of interesting people. Like the line is already long and I know that you're enjoying the interviews. I'm going to be doing uh, more cooking stuff and yeah, more recipes. So stay tuned at my website, olenkoskitchen.com. So love you guys. Thank you so much. Live, love, light and fruits from Olenko's Kitchen and friends. And good night, everyone. So enjoy your evening or whatever you are, whatever. I know a lot of you are rewatching. So good night, everyone. Bye. But thank you so much, Nicole. Bye. 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 Hold on. This is bye.